Yeah, okay. right. yeah would I, I think that would be the final yep. follow-up question. Would you continue with this? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, I've had some cheat meals. Uh, I don't, this is a, a small point with me, I don't like to call them cheat meals, like to call non -paleo. them non-paleo. It's just, you know, it's not just PC to me, it helps me feel like I'm, it's not a guilty mentality. Um, you know, because people can attack stuff like this, anything, and say, you know, it has cultish aspects to it or something like that, you brainwashing. Um, and I think one way to get away from stuff like that is to, you know, not take the guilt element out. Occasionally, you can have a non-paleo meal. It's not the end of the world. You're not a bad person for doing it. Uh, you may be interested to find out that those meals, uh, especially when they happen infrequently, uh, how you feel afterwards might be an indicator to you whether it's a good idea or not. I found a lot of them, especially drinking even just a couple of drinks, I have not felt so good the next day or four or five hours later. It usually hasn't been worth it. Uh, the burgers and things that I, I didn't crave, but I thought that I craved, and I just wanted to try them. They just... Um, they didn't taste as good as I thought they would. They didn't make me feel as good afterwards, which is not to say that I would eat paleo for the rest of my life 100%, but would I continue doing this uh, with a very high degree of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, conforming with, with the diet? Absolutely. I definitely, I definitely would stick with it. I think uh, it's a very good idea for people out there that uh, do decide to experiment with this or experiment with anything. Uh, to go by Rob Wolf's suggestion of uh, how you look, feel, and perform on a normal basis. Um, so I, there's, there's such a practicality that gets lost in doing a lot of these things. Right. And you definitely don't want to get caught up in the cultish aspect of right. any sort of diet. Anything in life generally anything, is not a good idea. Any, any sort of... Min-maxing beyond the point where you are benefiting from it is just a waste of time and frustration. Uh, right. You shouldn't let any one aspect of this get you hung up. Uh, maybe some, some quick tips too, just a thought would be, you know, if you don't think that you could do this, just cold turkey, uh, you know, that's the way he recommends to do it. And it's a good recommendation. If you don't do it cold turkey and you don't just do it, or at least at one point you don't put in that 30 days with, with no BS, no filler, you may not see the results that you want to see. Uh, you have to kind of give it the, at that period. Uh, but if you don't think you can ramp up into it just cold turkey, then we've had people have success taking out making breakfast paleo. That's an easy right. meal. You know, right. eggs and some kind of meat or something. And right. then one meal a day at first and right. then you then can move up to lunch or dinner. And then and then eventually, you know, or the first week even just cut out snacks. Try and right. make it uh, you know, healthy meals. Just try a little bit and then work from there. If if, if your hang up is I can't just do this cold turkey. I think, yeah, uh, a lot of people get caught up in the fact that they're taking stuff out of their diet and what people need to understand is that because we're not doing a, a caloric deficit in the diet, you can eat as much as you want, yeah, and big. you should just, at first, maybe perhaps just eat the, the good stuff, what we would consider the, right. the really good stuff, before you have your bad stuff, and maybe you'll just minimize your bad stuff enough that you'll see a fantastic result from that. Just because you're full. But, yeah. um, again, going back into the, the experimentation side of this, if you decide to throw in a lot of variables into your experiment, you're going to have mixed results. So you can never really tell what's going to work for you and what's not going to work for you unless you pretty much do it uh, with a, a small amount of variables. As, as exactly, and that would be the just cutting everything for 30 days. But if you have to ramp up into it a certain way, then, then and that's, that's what That's your do. way to do well, it. If you and can't give exactly. something up, then try it without giving that up, and maybe you'll see results, maybe you won't. But don't use that as an excuse to say, I don't want to try this at all, I can't, I can't not drink. Uh, you know, at all, uh, then have a drink or something, have a cheat meal, do, but, but give it a try, give it a, an honest try, and the other thing too I would say is you just need to be a little organized and plan things out in terms of, uh, I would cook lunch sometimes with my breakfast, so I would not have to worry about it, you don't want to be caught at lunchtime trying to find a paleo meal out somewhere, panicking, starting to crash and burn, and then you would blame the program for it, that is just, you know, you not being organized and planning out your meals, you do need to plan a little bit. Um, so going into uh, planning a little bit more, um, it's like the old adage of when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So the, this is not widely accepted yet. The paleo diet is not an easy thing to access on the road unless you go to a supermarket and you know exactly what fresh fruits and vegetables uh, and, and get a road to free cooked meat something. perhaps um, that you can get. Terrible. Um, so therefore you you do it does require a little bit more planning on the side perhaps you do want to cook like maybe two meals maybe the day's worth of meals and just kind of sort it out so that you can have it on the go maybe you want to get a little cooler throw it in your car something like that yep. um 
Dan, as he said, was extremely busy and still managed to do this. So it's not really a, a valid excuse to just say, yeah, I'm really busy, you know, I got a lot of things to do, and therefore I can't afford to eat healthy right. because my lifestyle is... Right. Because of money or my lifestyle, yeah. you know. Yeah, if you can't afford the grass-fed meat, then then don't then don't do that. I mean, you can't use that as you can sabotage yourself doing this. Like you can sabotage yourself with anything else. If you right. if you want to fail, you can make yourself fail, and then you can blame anything else other than yourself. But you're the only one that knows whether you actually put in the effort and did it the way you should have. I think another thing that that is worth men mentioning too on this is if you are someone that is only eating to satiety levels and say you're not training very hard. Or maybe you're not training at all. Maybe you're just doing diet as a diet thing on the side. Um, if you're just eating to satiety levels, this will absolutely make you more satisfied than just eating a what would be considered a typical American diet at this point. Um, if you notice, like a lot of times when you have some carbohydrate and maybe you have like something else on the side, maybe a palm-sized amount of meat or something, and you're hungry 15 minutes later, you're not satisfied, and you're going to snack on stuff that is not nutritious and is probably doing a lot of harm to your body. Right. So if you're filling yourself up with all this good food, you should be satisfied for maybe four or five hours, maybe longer, depending on how much you had, uh, and depending on how much you're busy, too, if you're yeah. mentally... Uh, uh, active. You're active. You're, then you're you're going to be so busy doing something else, you might forget to actually have a meal. Which is actually going into it when you're training really hard can be one of the problems with doing this. People have a tendency yeah. to undereat for their training load yeah. when they do this. Uh, Dan, we had to count calories yeah. at one point to make sure right, that I to make was sure you were getting enough dude. because you were definitely. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. limited by. I wasn't told to limit it. I was told to eat as much as I wanted. You do have to keep track of. Make sure you're eating enough. Right. Because there are so many different satiety hormones that are released when you have all this kind of food. So that um, if, what I'm saying is if somebody does go on this diet, it's not like you're going to be spending so much more money because you're going to be eating so much more. You are going to have a tendency to be satisfied with less than what you would expect to eat. And to tie it into to something you mentioned earlier about not making it all about what you take out or what you can't have in the diet you can think about the stuff that you're adding. You're adding food that's healthier and better for you and in the end will satisfy you more and taste better to you. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's a, you said yeah. it's kind of like a cheesy way of looking at it, but it's true. It's true. You know, you're cutting out things that afterwards you look back and say, were they really doing more harm than good? Mm -hmm. You know, because you do have that where people will be hungry 15 minutes or, you know, an hour later, half an hour later, and then your choice is either uh, ha have some more chips or something or have another um, nutrition bar yeah. or do I just go hungry until, uh, you know, until the clock says it's time for another meal and either way is not optimal. That is uh, that's a, a good thing to mention too is uh, a lot of people are supplementing their meals with like some kind of meal replacement nowadays because they're busy and they're on the go and everything and that is just, it's so non-intuitive mm -hmm. to do that. I mean, if I were to ask anybody, I would almost certainly uh, think I would see the trend that people would say to eat real food over not real food. Mm -hmm. Yep. More often than not, I mean, most I'm pretty sure most people would agree that having some sort of supplementation bar, uh, like a nutrition bar or something like that, it's Someone not... Someone who used that term loosely, nutrition bar. Yeah, exactly. The glorified candy bar, I've been there. That, that like, work. such as the Snickers bar, which is literally a candy bar, but they call it marathon for whatever reason. <laughs> Hope we don't get sued by Snickers. Um, <laughs> um, you know, you go into that and... It, you're not going to get more nutrition out of that. You're going to get more nutrition out of, it, despite the fact that the soil may not be so rich as it used to be in the world, you're still going to get more nutrition out of your basic fruit and vegetables and healthy, natural grown stuff than you will out of anything that is processed and put in a package and something that you cannot recognize.